All right, thank you for joining us today, everyone. Um, like I said, if you're new and just logged on, my name is Alyssa Emerson. Um, I'm gonna be one of our MCs for the presentation today. Um, today is going to be all about move-in. I know move-in day is just a little under two weeks away, we're almost there. So we know that you guys have questions. We have information that we wanna make sure you guys get. So today's all about you guys. Feel free to put any questions in the chat as you come up with them, we'll answer them all at the end during our Q&A. And we hope that you guys get some really great information today. We're looking forward to talking to you. So like I said, my name is Alyssa. I am a student assistant here in housing. I'm also a resident. I've lived on campus for three years now in various buildings. And then we also have Nikki and Mario on the call with us, if you guys want to introduce yourselves. All right, sounds good. Um, so my name is Nikki Dunham. I use she, her pronouns. I'm the Senior Director of Housing and Residential Life here at Wayne State. Um, I, I want to take it just a minute while I uh, just introduced myself to um, also welcome you to the webinar this afternoon. We are so excited to welcome you to your new home at Wayne State University. Here, we hope that you find a sense of belonging and success beyond your goals while you're here at Wayne State. And we in Housing and Residential Life are really here to uh, help facilitate that and support you along the way. We know that you have been very busy uh, getting ready to move to beautiful Midtown Detroit, and we have been so busy here on campus getting ready for your arrival. We are super duper excited. I'm so glad that you had, cho that you had uh, chosen to attend this webinar this afternoon. Um, so that you can really learn as much as possible and have a smooth move in process. You are going to be absolute pros when you get to campus next week, thanks to the help of Alyssa and Mario this afternoon. Um, but don't forget to pack your patience. This process is never without its hiccups, uh, but we're here to make sure that you feel very well prepared. Um, so if you aren't sure about something, as Alyssa already mentioned, please feel free to ask in the chat. Um, there are absolutely no silly questions. This um, can be kind of a crazy process and we just want to make sure um, that you feel really well prepared and absolutely feel free to do the same when you arrive to campus next week. Um, there will be so many of us from the housing and residential life, both professional and student staff uh, that will be around to help support you. And I just want to note that today was the first day that move in days were on the 10 day forecast. Um, for the first day of move in and the weather is looking gorgeous. Um, so we'll keep putting those positive weather vibes out there. Um, but again, thank you so much for joining us and we will see you next week. Like Alyssa said, my name is Mario Cheney. I'm the Associate Director of Marketing for Student Auxiliary Services. So you may have received emails from me or from housing. I'm the, the man behind the... Uh, the email. So I'll say that uh, I definitely want to echo what Nikki said and say welcome to Housing Residential Life. We're so excited you decided to stay with us and live at Wayne State and, and call Midtown and Wayne State your home for the next, hopefully for four years, if you're an incoming first year student. Uh, I just want to say you're in for a, a treat. Uh, we have some exciting things planned for fall opening as well as for our resident orientation. Uh, I can't wait. I've I'm counting down the days for you all to be on campus. All right. I'll send it back to you, Alyssa. All right. Yeah, we're super excited to have everybody here today and to have move in just around the corner. Um, the first week after move in is definitely one of the most fun weeks of the year. So I know I'm really looking forward to it as well. All right, so just to read off our mission statement before we get too much further, housing and residential life at Wayne State fosters student learning and success through engaging residents in an intentional living learning community. Supported by safe, comfortable, and convenient residence hall, apartment, and dining environments, residents grow in self-awareness and cross-cultural understanding as they practice social and group development as members of a diverse group of Wayne State learners. Essentially, this is Wayne State Housing promising to provide a safe, inclusive, and fun experience for our warriors to live and learn while on campus. All right, so jumping right in, if you are a first year student, a transfer student, or a living learning community student, your move-in date is Thursday, August 24th. So it's coming up, you're almost there. 
Um, we do stagger the move-in by times according to your last name. So you did receive this information in an email and it's on our website if you need to refer back to it. Um, but as you can see in our chart, if you're the first letter of your last name is A through H, you're going to be moving in between 9 and 11 a.m. If your first letter of your last name is I through Q, you're going to be moving in 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. R through Z, you're going to be 2 to 5 p.m. And then if you miss any of those move-in times, you can move in between 6 and 9 p.m. Um, when it is your time to move in, you're going to go ahead and report to the Welcome Center. And as you can see um, at the bottom, if you don't make it during your move-in time and you come between 6 and 9 p.m., please just report directly to your building. All right, and then if you are not a first year student, transfer student or LLC student, and you are an upperclassman returning to campus with us, you will be moving in on Saturday, August 26th. Um, just like with the other move-in times, um, nine to 11 is gonna be last names A through H, 11 to one is gonna be last names I through Q, two to five is last names R through Z, and then six to 9 p.m. is that open move-in time. So. Everybody has the opportunity to move in after 6 p.m. if you missed your move in time earlier in the day. All right, so the move in process. I know I've gotten a lot of questions about what it's going to look like on move in day when you come to the Welcome Center. So if you are living with us in any of the homes in our residential community around um, Keast Common, so that would be Anthony Wayne Drive Apartment. Um, Chatsworth Suites, Gafari Hall, Towers Residential Suites, you're going to go ahead and check in at the Welcome Center. The Welcome Center's address is right here, 42 West Warren. Um, we will have parking for you in Structure 6. It's right by the Welcome Center, just a quick walk. Um, if you are moving into University Tower Apartments or Thompson Home, we do ask that you report directly to your building on move-in day. So you're going to skip the step at the Welcome Center. Once you're at the Welcome Center, we're going to check and make sure you're all set. You've got your room assignment, um, and then you're going to get all of your paperwork, so your keys, your mail keys, any forms that you need to fill out. Um, and once you've got all that, you're going to go ahead and head over to your building. So once you make it to your building, we're going to have little drop off on load zones in front of each of the buildings that you could be moving into. So these are designed for you to park for maybe about 15 minutes, just enough time to unload everything out of your car. We'll have the Warrior Welcome Crew waiting for you. This is made up of staff and students who are volunteering to help out on move-in days. They're all going to have matching t-shirts on, so it'll be really easy to pick out who's there to help you out. Um, so they will be on hand to help you unload and help you take everything in. Um, something to add is we use big gray moving carts on move-in day. We have some available, but we do not have enough for every single student moving on campus to have their own. So while we will have people there to help you carry everything up, we only have a limited number of those gray moving carts. So if you have anything like a big cart, a dolly, a wagon, anything like that, we do recommend that you bring it with you on move-in day just to make the process a little bit smoother in case there aren't any carts available when it's your turn to move in. And then once you have everything unloaded from your car, we will have parking available in parking structure two if you have a parking pass. Um, I know most students living on campus will park their car in structure two because it's the overnight structure. Um, we also will have parking in parking structure five for guests in short-term parking. So if you're parking in structure five, you cannot stay overnight. Structure two is the overnight one. All right, I'll take it from here. Just some things to think about when before you come to campus on either Thursday or Saturday. Uh, please complete your check-in pass. You received a, your student should have received an email uh, stating what the check-in pass was and how to complete it. Uh, it just goes through the things of like a, for your financial responsibility, the vaccine requirement, as well as um, just some other things that the student should know before coming to campus. Uh, in addition to that, pack your student one card. You should have received a one card in the mail uh, when you either completed your orientation or if you have not received it in the mail, it's a good time to, to call um, or either email, no, I'm sorry, to follow up with the one card office for your one card. At this time, we actually do not have it sent to your house, but to have it pick up the day of you coming to um, move in. So 
we don't want it to be crossed in the mail. So at this time, just stop by and pick it up at the Welcome Center. So the office is also lo located in the Welcome Center. So in case you have not received it by right now at this point, you might want to just stop by and grab it. Um, and I think the next one is we want to make sure that you all know that our uh, meals that, I'm sorry, if you are starting or coming on Thursday that your meals does not start until the 26th, but we will take care of your meals for you starting on that Thursday. Um, I'm sorry, your meal plan if will start on that Saturday, but we will take care of meals for you. So we have like a barbecue plan for you. Uh, we're going to feed you breakfast at Towers. It, you have food all day. You have snacks, so you'll be good. Uh, just want to let you reiterate that that was one of the things that was sent in the email that you will have meals, but your actual meal plan will not start until the Saturday the 26th. Okay. And then last thing to think about, or one of the last things is renter's insurance. Uh, although it's not required that you have renter's insurance to live on campus, we do highly suggest you get renter's insurance, either get it through your home and owner's insurance or you find a company that provides renter's insurance. Uh, we do not suggest a particular company, but we do suggest that you get renter's insurance for your student. Uh, there are a lot of things that may occur, such as damages uh, that are unexpected. So just to cover yourself and your student, we do suggest that you get renter's insurance, okay? And then what to pack. We did a webinar on this uh, earlier, I want to say in July. Um, we asked students not to bring a ton of that stuff to campus. Uh, we've seen the chat in some of the parent uh, or parent Facebook page of like, I'm bringing this and I'm bringing that. Uh, just know that you're sharing this space with another student and that the rooms are decent size, but you don't want to overload and bring your house to uh to campus uh so we definitely want you to think about uh what will you need let's say from now until uh thanksgiving so you definitely don't need your winter coat or winter boots so those things are no parents are thinking about in advance but sometimes it might be best to wait after you come home for thanksgiving break that you could bring those extra uh winter things okay and i'll turn it back over to Alyssa. All right, so speaking of what to bring to campus, we have decided to give away an ultimate housing pack this year, not just one actually, but two of them. So we're really excited. This housing pack was designed both by the housing staff, but also by student staff. So it's designed with students in mind as well of some things that we personally would like to see or like to win in a giveaway. So some of the things that we're giving away include a TV, there's a Roku, um, I know there's some flags, some bedding, stuff to decorate your room with. There's a Keurig, um, some headphones. So definitely some items that students would be interested in. I know I can't win it, but I personally would love to win some of the stuff in this. Um, and it's super easy to enter too. So all you have to do is follow Wayne State Housing on Instagram. Our Instagram handle is Wayne State Housing. So super easy to remember. Um, we would love for you to tag us in your move in photos and or videos, whatever you choose to post. Um, use the hashtag WSU move in on the post. And then the only other requirement is that you're a housing resident for the 2023-24 school year and that you're moved in by August 28th. So we're going to pick those two winners the first week that classes start. So it'll be a really cool treat if you win to start off your semester right. And yeah, this is something we're super excited about. So we can't wait to see everybody's posts. Uh, to answer the question in the chat, it does have to be a feed post, not a story post, but you can repost it to your story. We would love to see that too. All right, so we are going to open up the floor for questions. I'm sure many of you have questions. Um, we would love to hear from you. So go ahead and put your questions in the chat and we're gonna go ahead and answer them in the order that we see them.
We must have did a really good job, Alyssa. And there's no questions. <laughs> right. There's no way nobody has a question about move-in. There's no dumb questions, you guys. I promise. Okay, I keep receiving the- Oh, uh, there we go. I just got a bunch at once. Yeah. Um, when are flu vaccines due? Mario, do you know the answer to this one? I'm going to give that to Nikki. <laughs> Hi, so the flu vaccine is usually administered throughout the fall season. So the Campus Health Committee will communicate when the um, flu shot needs um, to be completed. We do several uh, flu shot clinics around the housing buildings on campus throughout the fall semester. Um, so we'll come actually to like um, one of the lounges in your building, um, the Campus Health Center comes in and actually administers those flu shots. Um, so those are unlikely to be required until, um, you know, flu shot season is over, which um, I believe, but don't quote me, is like toward the end of the, the fall semester. Yeah, I think they usually come in around November to give us those. Um, once you park in Structure 5 after unloading, is it free or do we need to pay? I believe it's free, but please correct me if I'm wrong, either of you. Once you're in the structure, it's free. Uh, we've, we've paid for the day, so we want to make sure that everyone has a pleasant experience when it comes to parking and unloading, so we we take care of the parking for you. So once you park, you're fine. We ask that you be mindful that um, others are coming to unload as well so that it's uh, kind of like a moving thing. But I think around like six or seven o'clock, we start to do like events and other things with our students so that they can get acclimated to um, campus and living in their perspective residence hall or apartments. So I think around like five or six o'clock, a lot of the traffic starts to die down, hopefully. Um, I think there is one from, it says iPhone. <laughs> Since my audio went out for a moment, uh, where does one park to unload if you're moving into Chatsworth? So when you're unloading, they're gonna have the unloading zone. It's gonna be in front of Chatsworth. It'll be marked so that you can see it. And then you can park in structure two or parking structure five is for guests. Um, when taking students to the welcome center, where do family park? Family can park in parking structure six, I believe is the one that we said by the welcome center. That is correct. Um, guests who are, what about guests who are visiting like family? So during move-in, students can have as many guests as they want to and as they need to, to help them on move-in day. So guests will not need to be checked in that day. You can go ahead and come up and help the students out as they move in and they'll be able to park in those structures as well. Do you know the measurements of the bed? This is Brooklyn. So the size of the mattress in um, the first years, not the first years, the residence halls. So Chatsworth Suites, Towers Residential Suites, Gafari Hall and Thompson Home, the bed is gonna be twin XL. If you're staying in um, Anthony Wayne Drive Apartments, your bed is going to be full size. When we take students to the Welcome Center, does family pay in the structure to wait for the student? I do not believe they will have to pay for that structure that day. No, Nikki's shaking her head, no. My daughter has mandatory practice from 5.30 to 9.30 p.m. on Thursday and Friday nights. Will dinner be available early enough for her? Denise, um, if they're part of a special group that has practice, I mean, we have both band and student athletes on campus right now. They have a little bit of a different schedule than the rest of our students. Um, so they are likely to have dinner at the Towers Cafe uh, prior to the times when we do our large scale events. All right, Tim and Linda Klein, do we need a shower curtain? Yes, you do need a shower curtain and you also need the shower curtain hooks that attach the shower curtain to the rod. That was the mistake that I made on my move-in days. I forgot the shower curtain hooks and I couldn't put my shower curtain up. So yes, you need both of those things. On my housing self-service menu, it says that my move out date is December 20th, but I did a nine month lease. How can I ensure that I stay in my apartment the whole nine month period? 
So you, if you sign an eight month or a nine month lease for the academic year, you do not have to move out um, during winter break. So you won't have to move any of your stuff out. Your same space will be waiting for you after the break is over. If you forget something or want to bring an additional furniture item, is it permitted throughout the school year? Um, yeah, you can move things in and out of your space throughout the year. Those carts that we were talking about at the beginning, those are available to rent from the front desk at any time during the school year. I know people who even use them just to bring in groceries from their car. So if you do have an additional item that you need to bring later on, you can absolutely do that. I was told there would be lofting equipment available. Where do we get that? So the lofting equipment, beds can only be lofted in Thompson Home, Gafari Hall, and Towers Residential Suites. Um, from the front desk, if you'd like to loft your bed, they do have rubber mallets available, but just like with the carts, there's only a couple. So I would highly recommend if you plan on lofting your bed that you try to bring a mallet from home. Um, other than that, as far as the rest of the equipment to loft the bed, it should be in the room when it arrives. And if you don't see the extra post in the room when you arrive, just let your resident advisor know or the warrior welcome crew. Is there a way to ensure that we get that before move in day. Um, it should, like I said, it should be in the room when you move in. I know the past few years when I've moved in, the lofting equipment has been in the room on move in day. Um, but if it's not, like I said, you can talk to your resident advisor or warrior welcome crew. Do refrigerators have to be plugged into original outlets? So I'm assuming an original outlet on the wall as opposed to plugging into an extension cord. I would recommend that you plug it into the original outlet in the wall just so that nothing happens. A follow-up uh, to my question. Oh, sorry, Mario, go ahead. Oh, no, I think we just missed uh, Denise's question. It says a follow-up from my question. She said she's on the forensic team. I believe her daughter. She hasn't heard anything yet about eating in towers. Um, I, Nikki, you want to take that one? Uh, yeah, um, Denise, I messaged you privately. Um, you'll want to just contact the director of that program because they should have a different um, meal time set up. You're very welcome. All right. Can we bring a mini fridge? Is there room for it? Yes, you can bring a mini fridge. And yes, you should have room for it in your room. Like we were saying earlier, try not to overpack too much. But I feel like a mini fridge is definitely something important. Almost everyone that I know who lives on campus brings one. Where do you find lofting equipment? Lofting equipment will be either in your room on move-in day or the RAs will be able to get it for you from the building. Does everyone get lofting equipment? So like I said, in the past, um, I lived in Towers Residential Suites for two years where the beds can be lofted. If you're living in Chatsworth Suites or Anthony Wayne Drive, the beds cannot be lofted, so you would not get lofting equipment. If you're staying in a building where there is lofting equipment, um, lofting equipment will be available for each student if you do choose to loft your bed. Um, like I said before, it has always been in the room when I have moved in on move-in day. They've had everything there except for a mallet. Um, so that's what I would assume is going to happen this year as well. Are there any specific events happening on move-in day? Yes, there are. So we have what we call resident orientation that happens the weekend after move-in. So if you're a first-year student, transfer LLC, it would start with a dinner for you on that Thursday that you move in. And we have activities that go on throughout the weekend. If you are moving in on Saturday, there are also events that are happening both with us and on campus that day. So yes, you can expect to have events happening. Like I said, if you're a first year student, usually starting with that dinner on move-in day. But yeah, we'll have things for you to do all weekend. My daughter has been assigned bed one. How do you know which is bed one or bed two? So um, that is referring to in some rooms. So for example, Chatsworth Suites, um, the bedrooms are shared. So bed one typically is on the left side. Bed two is typically on the right side. I know that sometimes they have them labeled as well, just so that each student goes to the right bed. It should also be indicated on your room condition report. Does Chatsworth Suites have a stove in the four-person suite? Chatsworth Suites does not have um, any kitchens or stove within any of the suites. 
So each floor does have a kitchenette area that has a stove, an oven, a refrigerator, a microwave, but it does not have any kitchens within the suites. Is each room in Chatsworth Suites clearly marked like A and B? Yes, the rooms in Chatsworth Suites are marked. There will be a sign correlating to each side. Like I said, left is usually A, right is B, but there is a sign with the letter um, next to each individual bedroom so that you won't get confused. How many outlets do the Gafari rooms have? Funny you should ask because we counted them the other day. So every single room in Gafari Hall has five outlets. It doesn't matter if your student is in a single, a large single, a double, or a triple. Your student will have five outlets in their room at Gafari. I have not counted for the other buildings, but for Gafari Hall, you're going to have five. If you have a four-person suite, could you choose to switch rooms or beds, or do you have to stay with your assigned bed? So you do have to stay with your assigned bed initially. Um, and that's for several reasons. One is just so that we know who's where they're supposed to be, but it could also be for damage so that we know that you're in the room that we know that you're in. Um, there are room change periods. However, the first room change period is usually about the second or third week of September, give or take. So if you and your roommate really, really wanted to switch bedrooms or something like that or switch beds, you could put in a room change request at that time. But please make sure on move-in day that you're moving into whichever bed and bedroom you are assigned to. How large is a large single in Gafari compared to a regular single? So a large single in Gafari is the size of a double suite in Gafari, except there's only one person and one bed and one set of everything. So if you've seen a double in Gafari, if you see the dimensions for that, anything like that, if you took a tour with us, you saw a double in Gafari, that's going to be the same size that a single in Gafari, that a large single in Gafari is going to be. Does each floor have an advisor or an RA? Yes. So each floor in all of our buildings does have a resident advisor or an RA. Some buildings such as Towers Residential Suites, it's a little bit bigger. So you're gonna have three RAs for each floor. Um, some of them like I know Chatsworth Suites, there's only one. The resident advisor's job is to watch over everybody on the floor. They do programming for everybody. So they put on floor events, there's building wide events. Um, especially for first years, they do what's called warrior rumbles, where they're kind of going to check in with you throughout the year to make sure your classes are going well, make sure that you're adjusting well. So yes, there are RAs on each floor, at least one on each floor, and they have a pretty active role in the residence hall community. Can students have friends from other buildings visit their room? Yes. So I'm going to pull out my one card real quick to help me explain this one. So I live on campus. This is my one card. If you haven't gotten your one card yet, you will soon. And I have a little sticker right at the top. It's orange and it says AWD. So I live in the Anthony Wayne Drive apartments. Everybody who lives on campus has a sticker that correlates with whichever building they're in. So if I have a friend who lives in Gafari Hall and we want to hang out in their building and it's before I believe it is 6 p.m. is the cutoff, but your RAs can give you an exact time. If I walk to the building front desk and I show my sticker, I don't have to be checked in as a guest. If I come after, say, 6 p.m. or whatever the time is, I really want to say it's 6 p.m. though, I would have to be checked in as a guest. So I would need to give my ID, get a guest pass, walk around. But if it's before that hour, they're just going to check. The security guard and the front desk is just going to check for this. I can't swipe into another friend's building that I don't live in, but I can get by the desk with the sticker. How high can your bed be lofted and can you fit a futon under it? Yes, you can fit a futon under your bed. I've done it before. Um, you can fit your desk and your desk chair under there as well. Um, in buildings where the bed can be lofted, you can typically loft it all the way up. It's about a couple inches away from the ceiling, which I wouldn't recommend because then you'll have trouble sitting up in your bed. But you can loft it pretty much all the way up. You can put it all the way to the ground if you want to. Um, so you definitely have room to fit a futon or a couch or a desk or anything underneath. You guys are asking great questions.
All right, let's see if we have any final questions. All right, can you leave and come at any time into the building? We'll let you answer that, Alyssa. Yes, so we don't have any curfews here. Once you move on campus, you're an adult, you're at college now. Um, so we don't have any curfews or anything like that. Um, during late night and early morning hours, we do have a security guard who sits by the elevators. So that's just an added level of security that you've got to show the front and the back of your one card to. But you can come and go as you please whenever you would like to. Um, I have another question as well. How do you get onto your loft? So I've seen students do it a few different ways. When I lofted my bed, there's some little like wooden rungs, if you will, that are on the side. So I kind of climbed up that like a ladder. I know some students, depending on how high their bed is, they'll get a ladder or they'll get um, an ottoman. You can get some storage ottomans that are pretty big that you can kind of climb up to. So it completely depends on the student. We don't provide a ladder. Like I said, you can use the wood on the side as a ladder if you want to, but that's completely personal preference. Is there any preference on the type of computers such as MacBook Pro or MacBook Air? So my advice for that, I'm assuming you mean like what you would like to use for your classes. My biggest advice for that is to talk to your major advisor and to try to find other students within your major. So I know my major, I'm doing pre-med and a dance major, so I don't have any like super, super difficult software that I'm trying to download, anything like that. I'm mostly just writing essays. So I personally have a MacBook Air. Um, one of my really good friends is a computer science major. So he has to do coding on his computer. He has to download software every day. And I know that he has um, a PC computer. So it completely depends on whatever you're comfortable using and what's gonna be better for your major. So that's how I would recommend going about trying to decide. I wouldn't say that there's a right or a wrong answer. Students like to use both. It's completely up to you. Do students have to stay once they move in? Um, no, students do not have to attend the resident orientation. So like that dinner that night, they don't have to go. So if they wanna go out and do something with their family or wanna spend an extra night at home after the day that they move in, they're absolutely free to do so. Like we said earlier, they're technically adults now, so they can come and go as much as they please. But we do encourage you to stay and go to resident orientation. Uh, I think it will be worthwhile to one, learn about your roommates, your RA campus, get acclimated quicker to your new life here on campus uh, than um, venturing out and leaving campus. But like Alyssa said, you are free to do what you think is best for you. Yeah, resident orientation is a lot of fun. I know I'll be there. A lot of student staff really look forward to it each year. So I would highly recommend going if you can. Um, when do you advise students to buy books? So again, kind of my not related to housing advice is to wait until syllabus week is over. Um, every class and every professor does it differently. I've had classes where all of our homework has been from the textbook. I've also had classes where the textbook was just additional supplemental material that we weren't going to be quizzed or tested on. So it completely depends on the professor. It depends on the program. It depends on the class. So my personal advice is to wait to buy books until after the first week of school so that you can kind of decide whether or not the book is required for the course. But that's just my opinion as a student. Um, for social work, would I recommend using a MacBook? I would talk to your advisor. I'm not a social work student, I'm not sure. Um, you did also ask if Wayne State uses Microsoft. Yes, we do use Microsoft Outlook for our emails, Microsoft Teams, um, things like that, Microsoft Word, Excel. And as a student, you receive that software free. Uh, yes. It comes with your tuition and all that good stuff. So uh, once you receive your access ID and password, you can definitely log into uh, either the online portal or you can download the uh, software to your computer to use. I got a personal message that says, any advice for contacting a future roommate when an email has not worked? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I would definitely recommend emailing them as it sounds like you've already done. Um, if it's been a while and they haven't reached out, I would definitely recommend emailing again just because it's getting soon. I do know of some people who genuinely didn't hear from their roommates until the day of move in. Um, sometimes it can be fun to move in and not get all of the stuff that you need and then make a big trip to Target to get some of those things like 
a carpet, um, extra storage, things like that, that you maybe weren't sure about before. Um, Every roommate is different. Some roommates will want to plan every detail out with you. Some roommates keep to themselves and it's kind of a surprise on move-in day. So I would recommend emailing them, but if emailing them doesn't work, it's all part of the adventure. I will definitely add to that. Um, Target is has really good deals this week and next week for the back to school. Not that I'm a big Target shopper, wink wink um but <laughs> i will definitely uh kind of check out target because i was there today okay that's all i'm going to say <laughs> okay uh, i have a question how long is the process of checking in as a guest so the check-in process for a guest really isn't super long um you would meet your desk at the door or your guest not your desk your guest at the door they can't swipe into the building so you'll have to let them in and then you'll just go to the front desk you'll let them know you're checking in a guest Guests do have to bring a photo ID with them um, so that they can make you a name, they can make your guest a name tag. You do have to accompany your guest at all times. They can't just hang out around the building by themselves. Um, but the actual check-in process for a guest, I would say maybe two minutes if the computer's slow. It's really pretty quick, but you won't have to worry about checking in guests on move-in day. I heard that there was going to be a second orientation on the 27th. Is that true? So that is what we're calling um, not orientation part two, but essentially we have what's called a fall, um, fall is it fall opening. So basically we're having all the type of events that are coming to campus. We have Festival, which is a big party. We have all the student orgs on campus come out and they have tables in Golan Mall and you can shop to your heart's content, uh, free giveaways from every student org, departments on campus. We also have our president, our new president, President Espy, giving the opening speech, her first speech on campus. Uh, so it's gonna be exciting. We ask everybody to come down to um, Keys Commons, listen to the speakers, and then just have a big old party on campus before classes start on Monday. All right. Um, how long is the process at the Welcome Center? So again, like Nikki said at the beginning, we ask that you pack your patients. Um, we do stagger the move-in times, but either way, you can still most likely expect there to be a long line and lots of people at the Welcome Center. It's hard to give you an exact time, but your student is going to go through several stations while they're there from you know, checking you in, waiting in line to get their paperwork, talking with a few other campus resources. So it'll definitely, It'll definitely be more than just 15 or 20 minutes. You'll be there for a little bit of time. So I would recommend parking and just hanging out for a little bit before they're done. What time should parents arrive for the fall convocation? Mario, do you know the answer to this one? I am looking it up right now. Okay. We'll get right back to you on that. Yes. Do we need to know where all of our classes are or will we figure out where those are later? I would highly, highly, highly recommend that you figure out where your classes are before the first day of class. Um, if you are living on campus with us, I know my roommates and I, my first year went to find all of the buildings together, maybe not necessarily the room number, but if you have a class in Manugian, you're going to want to know where Manugian is so that on the first day of classes, it's just one last stressor, one less stressor that you have to try to figure out where all your classes are. Um, unless you have a class at the Mike Illich, all of your classes will be, I would say a maximum of an eight minute walk from where you'll be staying on campus. So they'll all be pretty close in proximity. Um, the WSU mobile app also has an interactive map that I would recommend um, if you're on campus and you're not sure where you are, you're not sure where to get to how you're how to get to where you're going. I would recommend downloading that app. But yes, definitely try to find your classes before the first day of classes if possible. All right, convocation begins at 2 p.m. in Keith's Commons, which is right outside of Chatsworth. All right. We ex hope that all parents and all first year students attend the uh, convocation. Like I said, it's a pretty good event and it leads right into the biggest party of the year, uh, convocation. I'm sorry, festival. Um, so excited about that. Can you name that app again? Yes. Uh, the app is WSU Mobile. I believe it's like our Wayne State dark green with the little shield W on it. You can also access your class schedule on there, your campus daily screener. It's 
I think that everybody should download it. If you're going to Wayne State, it's really handy. Um, but WSU Mobile. What day is convocation? It is August 27th. Which, which is the day before classes start. Right, so that's a Sunday. If you have a class at the business school, do students take the queue line or a bike? I know students that take both, but most people that I know choose to take the queue line. You can use it for free as a Wayne State student. You just have to flash your one card, but it's completely up to you, whatever you're more comfortable with. If you're having trouble with the app working, who should the student see to address this issue? It's glitching on my daughter's iPhone. Um, I'm Probably. not sure on that one, maybe CNIT? Uh, probably CNIT. So in the student center lower level, uh, CNIT have a help desk and they will also be at move-in. So I think they have a tent on Anthony Wayne Drive, if I'm not mistaken, but you can stop by the tent or either the lower level of the student center and they can help you get that fixed. Sometimes it's probably just an update that needs to happen to either the phone or the app. I'm not tech so let me not say that, <laughs> but I would definitely highly suggest stopping by either the tenant or the, the office on the lower level. All right. Yeah, I use that app almost daily, so I would definitely recommend um, getting that checked out. You can also use it to see how full, full the parking structures are, which is another perk if you're not buying a parking pass. All right, any final questions? Are the washers big enough to wash comforters? Um, I mean, I've washed my comforter in the washer before. I feel like as long as you don't have a super, super big one, you should probably be okay. How long do parents usually stay on move-in day? It completely depends on your parents on what time you move in. I know my parents left just around when that dinner time started because that was kind of when resident orientation started and we started doing things as students by ourselves. But your parents are free to you know, stay with you throughout the day if you need a little extra help. They can leave right when you're done moving in. It's completely up to you guys. All right. Well, if that is all the questions that we have, um, I'd like to recommend that everybody in the presentation, especially if you're living with us, goes ahead and takes a picture of this slide. This has our website, our email, our phone number, our social media, every way that you could potentially want to contact us throughout the year. You might not think that you have any questions now, but you might have questions a few months down the road. You might have questions about applying for housing next year. You might have questions now that you didn't get to answer. So go ahead and take a picture of this slide just so that you have all of our information in one place so that if you need to get a hold of us, you can. And you can feel free to email us or call us at any time, um, especially during move-in. We're checking these emails very frequently. We're getting back to you as quickly as we can. So uh, one last question, when can students apply for the RA position? Um, let me make sure that was the whole question, hold on to apply for RA for next year. The RA application typically opens up in October. Um, the RA positions are very, very, very competitive. There are a lot of students that are vying for only a few spots. So it will start with applications in October. The interview process usually ends up going until about the end of February, sometimes March. And then usually at around March or April, students find out whether they were selected to be an RA. And then if you were selected to be an RA, what building you will be in. So it usually opens in around October. So that would be October of this year to be an RA for next year. And definitely make sure that they keep an eye out for that email if that's something that they're interested in. All right. Thank you all for coming to our webinar today. I want to say thank you to Alyssa for being our MC. We just received one more question. <laughs> <laughs> this is the last one, I promise. Are there open hours for the dining hall or can you go anytime? So typically they have their meal time, so breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then they have like 
light lunch, light dinner in between. If there's not a meal, they usually have a salad, like their salad bar open and pizza, but that's it. So if you want anything beyond that, you'll have to come for a meal. And they do have like a late night. They have late night as well. That goes until 1130. Correct. All right. Again, thank you all for stopping by, taking your um, time to ask those questions and listen to our presentation. Hopefully that this was helpful and can make your movement experience as smooth as possible. Again, thank you, Alyssa, for taking the time out of your day as a student to help other students. And we will see you on the 24th or the 26th. All right. Have a good evening, everybody. Thanks for coming, everyone.